going on tour again. You know what? I love that. I don't know how to, you know, it's a lot of work to do the TBS show, but I would like to do that again, so I'll have to figure out a way to do it in a more controlled... I mean, this is obviously, this is a snapshot of a moment when, you know, I mean, I really believe, if nothing else, what I went through had very little to do with me, and it had more to do with how our culture's changing. There's the old, you know, there's this certain way that broadcast television's been done for about 50 years, and things are changing, and I really do feel like I was standing on a fault line. And the, the earth cracked right between my legs, and instead of jumping back that way, I jumped this way, for better or worse. And I believe that this film is really about a moment. And so, I don't know if I can replicate the energy and the excitement of that tour. I just need to get into a big spat with TBS. <laughs> do it under different circumstances and different motivation, you know, think, you know, the circumstances will never... No, 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 I'd like, to, I'd like to do it. I mean, I think this was something special, and whatever happens next will be, will have to be a little bit different. Yes? At the same time, I enjoy... Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I was looking at someone else, but probably presumptuous. Go ahead. <laughs> and then I'll get you. Yes. Alex, hi. How are you? I'm really good. Let's just chit-chat. Where do you live? Where do you live? Hollywood, okay, cool. And you were talking about how you, the difference between broad, or broad, um, sorry, broadcast and TV and things mm -hmm. like that. But in the past few months, I've seen your, your writers at the improv and your band mm -hmm. at the Troubadour. Do you guys think you'll be keeping up the intimate settings like those? Yeah, I do like that. I did something, uh, I've done two events recently where I like to just show up at the last minute. Mm -hmm. I saw you play drums and guitar at the Troubadour. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, that was really fun. That was a great chance to just. Um, keep this part alive. I, I love rockabilly music. That's my thing, and that was my um, thank you, one guy out of six. <laughs> those odds, I'm doing well. Um, yeah, I've always that, that's the music that spoke to me. I don't know why. And, and again, like a lot of people in this room, I don't know why these things speak to you. I wanted to tap dance when I was eight and thought that was important, and then uh, when I was. 19, I wanted to be Jerry Lee Lewis or Elvis Presley or anyone who was cutting at Sun Records, and I don't know why, because that was the era of Flock of Seagulls and 99 Luft Balloons, so I don't know why I wasn't drawn that way, but I went the other way, and uh, so you get these strange inspirations and you just go with them. Yes, I think, yeah. Um, I called your style of guitar playing Coco Billy. Coco Billy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder, how does the pleasure of making people laugh different for you from the pleasure of making music and trying to touch your hair? Yes. Come on up. You can, you know, uh, you touch the hair. It's just, uh, it's got a lot of mayonnaise in it now. Is that nice? Is that doing anything for you? Oh, okay. You should wash your hands. Um... I get a lot of pleasure out of music, but I'm very clear about one thing. I know the difference between what I do and what real musicians do. Um, there are, the band I play with, I mean, they are real hardcore musicians, and they deserve a shout out. I don't think they're here, but they are. And what that band basically does is create a, a rocket and I sit on the very nose cone and get all the benefit of what they are doing. Uh, but I am not, I don't even consider myself a musician. I play the guitar the way someone would play a kazoo. I have a lot of, a lot of my joy and the energy comes through, but I am not uh, technically very skilled. It's just that I know what I like and I can do what I can do. And at some point I realized, oh, I'm a performer that just... When I was, I came out here to LA when I was 22, and a stand-up comedian friend of mine uh, used a guitar in his act, and he left town at one point. And I played the drums in college kind of badly, and he, the stand-up comedian left his six-string guitar with me and said, can you take care of it? I'm gonna leave town for a bit. And so I picked it up and plucked it, you know, for a little while, and I thought, maybe I could learn how to do this a little bit. And then when he came back and took his guitar back, I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. So I went to a place called Freedom Guitar, which is on Sunset, and I 
paid ninety dollars for a Yamaha beat up. It's basically a pawn shop. And I bought this <laughs> guitar and then I got the Mel Bay chord book and I taught myself and he's got this it's from like the nineteen forties and he's got this big he's got a fat head and a little pompadour. And I uh, was like, I like everything about this guy. <laughs> And I taught myself, I used to sit in my apartment on Cochrane, and there's, and this is a lesson to you guys, you can accomplish amazing things when you don't have a girlfriend and can't get a date. <laughs> no one would talk to me. I was very thin, I had no money, and I uh, was a little skin challenged, and I used to come, I used to work at my job and then come home to my $380 a month apartment, take out the Mel Bay court book, and uh, play, and just practice over and over and over again. And so, I don't even know where that was coming from. And there was a lot of watching Saved by the Bell in my gym shorts, <laughs> which I do understand. <laughs> Did you just shout, Zach Morris? <laughs> I could have security take you away. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, I was wondering if uh, Sona is single? <laughs> scoping this guy out. Sona, why are you sinking into your chair? I have that effect on all women, apparently. But more, more importantly, can you hug my friend Joyce? What is this hugging thing? Hi, oh, hey, Joyce! Oh, wow. Right. Okay, I'll wind it this way. Uh, Sona, yes. Uh, Sona's single. And, uh, I have very high standards for Sona. Here we go. Oh, Sona's right here. I think you should meet Sona. <laughs> Why are you hiding behind your purse? He's a very nice man. Better than that last guy. Come on, I don't know. I was just making that up. Just kidding. So I just think you two should meet, and then you work that out. That's what I'm saying. Nice to meet you and hug you. Nice to see you. You who I didn't talk to. You seem weird. Yes, oh, hi, how are you? What's up? Yeah, sure, a hug, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is nice. You all know my wife's here, don't you? Okay, that's great. I'm cleaning gutters tomorrow. Do it, asshole. Get a relief hug. Yes, hi, how are you? I'm good. Good to hear, yeah. Yeah. So, what is your fascination Yeah, well, not the solo, but he owns the. Yeah, he has. He owns my soul, Jack White. <laughs> he, well, you know, he's just been. We clicked. My relationship with Jack White's very strange because we. Uh, the first time I thought that I had met him was I was doing the late night show and he was on Saturday Night Live when the White Stripes first hit it. And I went upstairs just because I liked their stuff and I wanted to watch from the background. And he saw me from across the room, stopped playing, and he and Meg came over and said, it's so nice to see you again. And I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> and he said, don't you remember you were in Detroit a couple of years ago uh, shooting a, a remote, and then when your remote was done, you came to a bowling alley in downtown Detroit, and you bowled, and we were there, and everyone came over, and you hung out with us, and we all... And they were just kids, and I hung out with them for, apparently for a long time. And we all did it. <laughs> when that gets in the paper. I wish I had my camera then. No, 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 I know. Exactly. But so we all, we all uh, uh, hung out for a long time, and they said, oh yeah, you, you, know, you just hung out and talked about music and comedy and stuff, and you were really cool. And I thought, well, that's nice. I completely forgot about that. And then they since went on to become these icons. And so we clicked, and they just would come and do the late night show and we would try experimental things with them and we were, I think they liked that we were into it. So we just became friends and that's how that whole thing happened. Sure. Speaking of uh, other musical acts that appear on your show quite frequently, uh, are we going to see they might be giants in the show again? Someone soon? No. <laughs> Not after what they did. <laughs> I just love saying a cryptic thing like that. <laughs> they know what they did. No, I, lo I love those guys. Absolutely love those guys. They're right in our wheelhouse, and we'd have them on any time. I'll have them on four nights in one week. <laughs> did you go already? No, you're just wearing the same hat as him. <laughs> Are you in a gang together? The guys that dress up like Depression-era newsboys? <laughs> Yes. 
you get a job on my show? Just show up at a screening and ask. <laughs> We're gonna start you at six hundred thousand dollars. A nine-year guarantee. I hope that's acceptable.